Have you ever wondered what happens when a loud entitled Karen is faced with a seriously scary judge? Well, today we're going to see Karens learning that their silly tantrums aren't tolerated in court. Karen with a DUI acts like a spoiled kid in court. Who could have seen that coming? And third degree sexual assault. She has pleaded not guilty by reason of mental disease or defect. Her trial is set to begin in May. This uh oh, this Karen decided to attack her own lawyer during a court session. This Karen tried to sue her date for not showing up and it went about as well as you can imagine. Perjury what exactly what perjury means. I know exactly what perjury means. I know oath. what perjury means. Are we done? No, you Is don't. A criminal offense or not? What statement? I don't see anything in the complaint that says he made some false statement of their own. Because you don't know what happened. You're on the outside looking in. You don't know anything. But you're the plaintiff. You, you have. Document. Wait a minute. You are the plaintiff. Are we done here? You have to are lay out here? your allegations are we done here? properly. Are we done here? No, I we're not. Exactly what perjury no, means. we're not. Looks like this Karen thinks this court session is just a hangout with her friends. Yes, it's sir. Go ahead, Ms. Kimball. Uh, a custody evaluation was completed, and so we have filed a motion for drug screening and a motion for a psychological exam based upon that custody evaluation recommendations. Talking, you'll be able to respond in just a second. Ms. Kimball, you can go ahead and finish, and then Ms. Styles, you'll have an opportunity to respond in just a minute. I need to pause the hearing. I don't have an attorney. Can you give me some time to get an attorney? Um, I haven't had time to, I haven't had adequate time to obtain an attorney and my attorney withdrawed and I'm going to need one appointed by the state. There's not, that's not an option. There's nothing there unless someone's asking that someone be held in contempt and jailed, which is not something that's set in front of me. Um, or it's a action by the state to terminate a parental parent rights or something like that. Those are the only times I have the ability to appoint an attorney for you. Okay, then go ahead. Uh, we also had sent discovery out uh, as laid out in our motion sometime back. Uh, I had worked with Ms. Stiles prior counsel and had agreed to two extensions. Um, and then we uh, ultimately never got a response and she filed a protect motion for protection. She protect got response. Okay. Hold on, wait a second. Um, Ms. Stiles, you just need to object and then let me know what your objection is. Don't yell Here, at her. Objection to hearsay. I ha let me, how do I submit my documents to you directly? Hold on. So, um, Ms. Kimball, are you saying this was something that happened between counsel? Uh, yes, back in November. Um, we are now setting our, this hearing is for our motion she to also represents and also sit there and okay so um miss styles i'll unmute you in just a second you need to let miss kimball finish what she's saying and then when you're talking she'll let you say what you're saying unless one of you has an objection that is a legal objection um you can't just talk at the other side so Ms. Kimball, why don't you just go ahead and finish telling me what, so you said that you're wanting uh, um, a drug screen, so a drug test, and do you say psychological or psychiatric? I thought you said A psychological that. exam. And then uh, we have a order to compel, to compel Ms. Stiles to turn over uh, the responses to our discovery request uh, to provide dates for a deposition and for attorney's fees for $1,500. All right. So... Ms. Stiles, I'm sending you a prompt to unmute. If you just unmute yourself, you can respond. Um, what is your response to those things? Let's go with the drug screening part. Do you have an objection to taking a drug test? I'm not going to pay for it because I'll tell you up front, I'll fell for marijuana. When was the last but time? But I'm happy to take it on. on when was the last time you took marijuana? 
I use marijuana daily. All day, every day. And it's legal in what states? California. So we can either get there or not get there. Your choice tonight. Okay. Um, so I will, I'm glad to take the direct test. It's going to be on his oh, expense. Stop. But I'm, stop. stop. I'm pretty low key. Um, we're in court. Fed up with Miss Kimball. Need, you need to be respectful. Your Honor, I don't think she knows what the word respectful means. So. I'm fed you can just if you're gonna use my last name, that's fine. Just say Judge Tonic. Okay, it's pretty easy. Um, so you use marijuana all day, every day. Not really all day, every day, but I use it daily, if that helps you with your interpretations. Mr. Loki, honorable judge tonight. I'm not interpreting. I just said what you said. Hey. Um, what is your response to the request for a psychological evaluation? I'm not doing it, and you cannot force me to do it. You cannot physically make me go and show up and partake in anything that I do not want to partake in, yes or no. Do you agree or not agree? Uh, you don't get to ask me questions right now. I'm asking okay. your that's I'm asking my, your position. That's my response to you. Okay. You will not get any. I'm not doing a psych eval, and you cannot make it mandatory. Interesting. Um, in terms of the motion to compel, where they're talking about discovery, what's your response to their um, motion to compel? Have you read their discovery? When are you gonna view my videos? Ma'am, you need to answer my question. I answered your goddamn question. All right. Um, so I'm gonna warn you that it is completely inappropriate to um, swear like that in court. You need to take yourself, um, you need to put yourself back on camera. This is where it really starts to get interesting. This Karen only makes things worse for herself. Thank you. Um, I'm not gonna allow that. So if you do that again, I'm gonna, um, sanction you $100 for every time that you swear in court um, because that's not appropriate. You just need to not do it. You can answer the question and be respectful to Ms. Kimball and to the court. And um, I'm not gonna tell you how to answer, but you can just say whether or not you're in agreement with something. In terms of the motion to compel, they, I haven't heard it yet. Um, so I'm just trying to find out from a cursory standpoint what your position is on these four issues so that I can figure out um, if there are partial agreements or not. It sounds like there aren't. Um, so based upon your response, I'm going to take it that you're not in agreement with their motion to compel. Um, in terms of their request for deposition dates, what's your response to that? I see you have a problem to unmute yourself. What date? Ms. Kimball, do you have uh, proposed dates? I can. I would propose. And whose expense? Mine? Because if it's mine, I'm not fing doing it. Sanction. Give me a hundred dollar fee. Woo I woo. Not. So um I am finding you in direct contempt. Okay. One fine. I'm finding you a hundred dollars. Okay, make it two. Damn, I said two words. Looks like this Kevin lawyer really loves the sound of his own voice. It would cause harm. Now, Attorney Pattis is still free to argue at any point that that's that the harm caused here wasn't what the, the plaintiffs alleged. That's what he's apparently claiming. But Mr. Jones's response to that question, if the answer is yes, one would expect that type of harm. That doesn't violate the court's orders, and right. it's not false. Yeah. If the answer is no, if the answer is no, one wouldn't expect that. That doesn't violate the court's orders, and it's, and it's not false, right? So e either one, he can testify truthfully without violating the court's order and putting himself in contempt. Or I don't know. Or I don't know. All right, so the how is- with that, Judge, is it's argumentative in tone. He's not an expert, and so what one does isn't what we're but here to show. We're here to show what he did. Right, but and that's a different- No, no, Attorney Pattis, Attorney Pattis, Attorney Pattis. How many times do I have to say when I'm speaking, you stop. You have been a member of the bar for a long, long time, and you know the rules in all the courts. So 
Your objection was that it was a motion in limine issue, I thought, that it would require him to lie. I now hear that it's a different objection, that it's speculative, he's not an expert. I'm waiting to finish, so I don't want to follow your right back. And I have been an officer for a long time. As you know, I insist on making my record, so thank you. And I'm sorry that I stepped on your question. I thought I wasn't done. What I was trying to say was the following. I objected because he's trying to get an evocation in the jury's presence, which is entirely improper, without permission of the court. I objected further because he was asking Mr. Jones a question that places him on the horns of the dilemma. In the course of all of his proffer outside the jury's presence, he's now switched it to one would expect, one would expect. That is simply not relevant. That's argumentative. He's a fact witness. His state of mind about his conduct is- I can't disagree with that. So I will sustain the objection. And where does that leave us with respect to possible future invocation? So if there's going to be an invocation, I've requested it be at the prelude to it be outside the jury's presence so that I can argue about whether the plaintiffs are entitled to it. All right, so how does that work procedurally? So there's a question. You're going to invoke on his behalf? I can't do that, I don't think. I mean, certainly in the jury's presence, I'll argue about it. I'll simply say motion about evocation. Motion about evocation. Okay. Does that work, Attorney Maddy? Sure, that's fine. Okay. So if that happens, Mr. Jones, if that happens, just put the brakes on, okay? So that she can do it. Okay, let's bring the jury out. So can I just see counsel in the meantime? Kevinched himself at the judge because he didn't like what he was hearing. Hey, whoa, 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 hey, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, everyone, the time is 642. Stop and take a look at this video. It's of a judge being attacked in court. That scene was captured on the court's camera. It happened during a sentencing hearing in Las Vegas. The defendant, unhappy with a new prison sentence, charges and jumps over the bench. You see that happening right there, lunging at the judge. It took a court martial and several others to bring the situation under control. Eventually, the judge was able to stand up and was escorted out of the courtroom. Her condition is now being monitored. A courtroom officer was also sent to the hospital, and the defendant faces multiple new felony charges. Kevin likes to have a full-blown argument with the judge during the court session. Deliberately. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you did. The words were that you deliberately were hawking up saliva. Bullsh**. I didn't hawk up no saliva, okay? That's bullsh**. And you're going to believe those lies. That's what I'm talking about. I didn't hawk up no saliva. You're going to believe a lie because they're wearing uniform, just like they beat Richards. You seem like such a nice guy. They beat Richards. Did they beat Richards in February? That rogue. Oh, and I don't know who Richards is, huh? February 15th, that rogue-ass died. Beat the man, fractured his jaw, put him in the hospital on life support. You remember that? They doing, he's doing such a good job, isn't he? Died. Wearing a uniform, right? Rogue deputy. Look at me. It's like eagle. You ain't got to scream at me. You going to raise your voice at me? Oh, my God. You raise your voice at me, I raise my voice at you. You just in a row. I appreciate Mr. Gaines making my point for me. You punk. Very well received. Maggot mother. And I don't, I don't think I have to take insults from you. I know. You. Use a. Use a. He's a tough guy now. Use a. But I think. Use a. And you'll be a. After I get sentenced, punk. I think Mr. Gaines is forfeited. I'm ready to go. I was ready to go. I'm You punk. I'm talking. You. He's a maggot. Yeah, you're a tough guy. He's a maggot, punk. You should have died when he was a baby. Yeah. Motherfucker. Maggot. Anytime, Mr. Gaines. Shut up, punk. He's a maggot. You should have died when he was a baby. Still born. If there was someone bent on digging his own grave, it would be this Kevin. Um, he's under oath from uh, the start of the trial. Um, no, I'm not. I'm not under oath. I raise your right hand when I swear you in. I'm not under oath. Raise your right hand, please. That's your bad finger. I didn't appreciate that. But go ahead. I'm going to swear you in. So you're going to threaten me like you did the other day? You saw me swear. 
threaten you to participate here. No, you time. threatened my life the other day. Thank you. I am not under oath. This is being done unconstitutionally. Y'all took my kids unrightfully. You won't allow my witnesses here. You won't allow my paperwork. Y'all took all my court paperwork. And when the, when they all come in here, I'm going to say the same thing. So let's bring them in. He was Quit wasting my time and bring them in so I can tell them the same thing. He was Quit sworn. wasting my time and bring them in. Holly, make sure you take down what I say. He was sworn in. No, I was not sworn in. Yes, I've never been sworn in this court. Bring the camera back. He's making this up. He's representing. He is making this up. I was never sworn That's in. I have not been sworn in sworn. at all. You're, doing You're a f***ing liar. Thank you very much, sir. Um, that being said, um, we're uh, ready to go ahead and proceed with that. Uh, no, we are not. So, that being said, um, number one, I need to know whether or not you want to be here during the trial process. No. All right. Do you want to testify, though? No, I don't. This is all being done unconstitutionally, unrightfully. Y'all are f***ing... You ain't allowing my evidence. You ain't allowing my people. We haven't started the trial yet. It doesn't matter. You still f***ing deny it. Deny what? Everything that I've asked. Every every motion I put up, you've denied everything. You wouldn't even look at my first two motions. I've looked at everything. And I came here respectfully I've before you even time. started acting like a little I've rich um, um, my daddy owns the building and I look like a f***ing idiot, huh? Brought your dress today, you little f***ing prick. You wanna take my kids from me and act like that? You win that f***ing You allow with me? Is that what you're gonna do? No. Well then do it again, come on. Shut the f up. I'm trying to think over here. On the road, it's time. Yes, sir. Alan, we're going to run that through. Mother take all my paperwork so you, I can't show these people. You want to take all my paperwork from me? Lock me in a cell naked all night? talked to you about this before. Mr. McCarty has chosen to voluntarily absent himself as opposed to doing other... Sorry, we got to deal with it first. I've chosen that room as opposed to duct tape. He can watch and hear what we're doing, and I'm going to allow him to confer with his attorney at the critical moments. But he's chosen, and he's chosen to absent himself from the courtroom, just so you know. I've talked to him. Uh, if that's what you want to call a conversation um, thus far. But we are not to perceive anything negative about that. He has a voluntary right to be here, which he's been given. And he has a voluntary right not to be here, which he's chosen to exercise. We are to perceive nothing of that. You are here to do the two things that I asked you to do on Monday. Was there a crime? committed the crime. And I'll give you the details on how the state has to prove it. That being said, I knew it was going to happen, but um, has there been any media attention brought to your um, to your world in a way that affects you in any way? I'm asking you collectively. No. All right. That being said, let me just make sure I got you in the right spot. The judge started acting like a real Karen when the victim's family lashed out at the attacker. Part of it is, if we have a concern, what's the alternative? Because then we, if we might get into a situation on the wall where I'm supposed to weigh the pros and the cons. Ma'am, ma'am. Ma Look at me. Ma'am! He keeps turning. He keeps turning. Ma'am, I told you once before, let me, let me please help you understand. You can't just talk out like that, okay? If you can't handle him looking at you respectfully, all I can say to do is don't be in my courtroom because he's going to keep doing it, particularly now that he knows that it irritates you. So you either are able to control yourself or you're not. And I would understand why you could not. I get that completely. But I can't have you talking up in court, okay? The next, I, I need you to hear this. The next time it happens, there will be a consequence. You understand that? All right, Mr. Rhodes, you're smiling. I don't know why you're smiling. Because I can. 
Well, because I can. It's not a crime to smell. It's not a crime. Continue to smell. what you were saying. But it doesn't help you, all right, to irritate people. All right. And you have a lot at stake in this case. It's not a crime to smell, is it? I didn't say you were committing. Okay, then. I'm saying Continue you're not helping you saying. yourself. Continue what you were saying. I just, I'm not allowed to smell. I would suggest right. you do what helps okay. you, not what hurts you. Okay. That's do what I want to do. Well, let's do see what, what you want to do. That's fine. Let's get that understood. I'm sorry. Let's get that understood. Well, I, I, you made that right. Continue what clear. you were saying about the motions. Okay. Right. I'm saying I want to have a hearing on it, and we'll be happy to give you a date when we can come back and talk about that. Is there work we need to do to be ready for that hearing, or we basically have what work needs to be done? Um, Judge, we haven't received their uh, their motion. But we, we yet, have so. yeah, we haven't filed the, the petition yet. Judge, we wanted to have a date from Your Honor. We have some exhibits. Um, some of them may be lengthy, so we're trying to get all that. Um, Karen had a show-stopping meltdown when she did not like what the judge was saying. <clears throat> Kevin tries fighting with the security at a courthouse and it doesn't go too well. Oh, they've wrought. So, you know how to make recordings in the court? Yes, I can, mate. You're not allowed under law. Well, I am. So, I do that. not follow your laws. So, I have every right, mate. Under common law, so, my name is under Kevin. common law, I have every right. No, I have every right, mate. Under common law, I have every right. No, under common law, Mate, you do not have any jurisdiction over me. Sir? You do not have any jurisdiction, mate. This is going to go to Channel 7, Channel 10, and everything, mate. There's you do not have jurisdiction under common law. I'm a free entity. Go for it, mate. You only have 72 hours to detain me. And that's under federal jurisdiction. So go for it, mate. Okay. So tell me your badge number and everything, mate. Well, I have every jurisdiction, mate. Well, I have every jurisdiction, mate, under common law. You're, you're violating my rights. I want you done for assault. And that lady. I want her done for assault under common law. Sir, so, warrant was issued for your arrest and you've been arrested in relation to that warrant. Under common okay. law. You do not have any jurisdiction, mate. Okay. Under common law, you do not have any jurisdiction. You can hold me for 72 hours under federal law, mate. Because you think I'm classed as a terrorist under f***ing common law, mate. So go for it. Okay. So you're getting done for assault. She's getting done for assault. That is assault, mate. I want you done. I want you formally charged. Like every other time I've tried. Hey, mate. And you know, because you've had to deal with me plenty of times. I've hey, never, mate. I've never yes, you have. Also. Yes, you have. Don't lie. Don't bullshit, mate. Under common law, mate, you got no rights over me. Only God has rights What's over me. What's your understanding me. of common law? Mate. I just want to put all your bylaws do not mean sh**. All this sh is fake illusions, mate. So keep going. What do you think all the lawyers left? What do you think the judge left? Because under common law, there is no law. jurisdiction, mate. Okay. All right, go for it. Yeah, I've got a push bike outside that's locked up too, mate. Okay. And I've got a pair of keys and uh, evidence thingy with security. It's all right. Under common law, yeah, mate. Can I grab a bench here from one of the files just for the, the details of who this gentleman's alleged to be? But the name on that is not my name. I can state that right here, right now, mate. You show it to me. No, sir, I'm saying the gentleman you're alleged to be, okay? Because if, if you look on my birth certificate application form, it is not 
as is stated on that form there, mate. And I want a verified criminal complaint too, mate. So let's go. We can keep playing these illusion games, mate. Go for it. Because under common law, mate, what, what do you think police don't like being recorded? Well, it's not, not a matter of police being recorded. The law says you can't record in a courtroom without authorization. Mate, this is a public place. Isn't it? The law says you can't record in a courtroom. It's a public place, mate. I've got every right. I'm not going to argue the law. I'm classed as a freeman, not a f***ing slave. Hey, mate, you're a f***ing slave. Hey, mate. Yeah, because you're, you're a f***ing laughing, because you just no, know you, it's f***ing true, you're free mate. You're to make whatever legal argument you want to make in relation to the matter. It's all right, you are illegally detaining me right now, mate. You have no jurisdiction, mate. What do you think I was behind that f***ing bit of wood, mate? Because you've got no jurisdiction, mate. I'm, you, I'm my own f***ing state mate F***ing learn your so, law what difference does a piece of wood make to your, your jurisdiction because we're in the queen's boat mate we're in the queen's jurisdiction the boat's a building it's a f*** off idiot oh, you're the one who said that we're in the queen's boat oh, what do you mean by that f*** mate okay, yeah, how, how long have right? you been in law enforcement mate and you haven't been taught any of this why do you think they've locked the f***ing courtroom mate Cause yeah, I'm f***ing crazy, I've got mental health issues, f***ing well with me. F***ing don't stop you every other time, you just jump on my back when I've got a f***ing disintegrated disc and pinched nerve and all that sh <sighs> Yeah, legally detain me. Hello. Hey. Yeah mate, just letting you know everything's being recorded under common law mate. Nice. But that, that's my entity, that's not me. That, that's a fake entity, not... No, I've got, I got every right, mate. Under common law, mate. Under common law, I've got every right. I didn't, I, I'm not owned by the Queen, mate. Well, I said, but anyway, so there's, there's, there's the warrant. That's right. Um, Warriors, right? I want her and him done for assault. Then don't forget, I want you yeah, two done for assault because you physically yeah. harassed me in the court. Mate, the, the understanding is you, you're going to have to come with us up to the watch house, all right? So I'm just going to tell you right now. Is that of my... No, just, can you just listen to me, please? Yeah, all right. Yeah, I understand yeah, you're fine. filming and that's fine. I just want you to be aware that... Oh, what, what, what's, your, what's your police yes, identification yes, number and all that, mate? My registered number is 9019. I'm Acting Sergeant okay. Lachlan Ibbett. I need That's you to come with us. Right. I don't want to have to use force, all right? I need you to come with us up to the watch house. If you don't come with us voluntarily, all right, we will have to use force. So am I under arrest? Are you listening? You yes. Are under arrest. Yes, you are under arrest. Do you understand? So, uh, under common law, I am under arrest. What I'm saying. You need to no, I do not understand. Right, I do so not I'm understand and comply. One more chance, you're going to come, or we're going to use force on you. I'm more than willing one to go, chance, mate. Well, let's, let's go. go then. Yeah, well, I'm let's recording go. the whole thing while we're going. That's right. That's right. Mate, I got every right. I got every right to record. This Kevin starts threatening the judge in the court, and while it didn't go too well. Mr. Rhodes, you can just you can just bring him up right here. Why have him come out like this for? I think you know why. What? You know exactly why. Now, listen, stop talking. You have been. Are you done? No, I'm done. You've been charged in the fourth degree. I'm going to keep talking because I don't want to have to see you back here for this. What you think? Where you live at? What you think at? Internet. I do so I'll you're saying out. you're gonna find out where I'm out? None of that. You got family. I'll be out. Okay. Yeah, You've right. been charged I'm with okay. assault in the fourth degree, minor injury, terroristic threatening in the third degree, with physical contact. Right. New charges. I'm entering a plea of not guilty on your behalf. Would you no, like me I'm to read guilty. the arrest warrant to you? No, I'm not guilty. I am setting a bond of fifteen thousand full cash on that char on those charges and uh, the other case once uh, this actually gets served on you is going to be dismissed without prejudice as duplicate. Do you have any questions? Would you not like guilty. appointment of a public not defender? Not I just said that. 
Not guilt. I just said that. Okay. I just said that. And would you like an attorney? Take me back to my cell. I'm not taking you anywhere. They can take you back, but would you like an attorney? All right. Okay. I'm going to appoint the public defender's office. Ms. Schroering, that was a threat against the court. I think that the I'm asking the county attorney's office to uh, take that into account and uh, consider what to do with that. Uh, yeah, we'll need to take pulled. Also, um, can you please get that served on him? <laughs> Thank you. Good luck with that, Eric. Yeah. Kevin gets called out for his attitude by the judge. It's going to be the day. You see it in Sheriff's text. She knows he's coming in town. The baby shower. The 18th is going to be the day I'm supposed to be there, but I'm not. I'm in Batesville, and I'm calling Billy. Every time. And they do it without me. And I know it because they show up at my house. Metal detector, cut the barbed wire fence, look for the gun, go to the lake with Billy and throw the gun away. Shotgun shells, wire clippers, everything. It's all the same, and it's been the same literally for 10 years. Through 20 interviews. Objection, Your Honor. This is just characterization. 20 this interviews. That's the proper hey. argument to yeah. your argument. You may proceed, Mr. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry, Ms. Perry, did you say something? I didn't say Ms. a word. Perry, I, I told you about that attitude. You would not, under your breath, be disrespectful to this court, sir. You argued things he has a right to answer when I to, uh, overrule your argument. To, have you sat down and said, of course it is? It I, is a proper argument. Ms. Perry, it's, there. it's a proper argument to your argument. You may proceed with that. Yes, uh-oh, looks like this Kevin lawyer stormed out of the courtroom after an angry exchange with the judge. The prosecutor was on this case. But she chose not to be here. That's not accurate, Judge. Okay, we were, I we don't, had, okay. your objection's noted. We had a phone status conference two weeks ago in which Ms. Schiff... Will your objection case. is noted. Okay. I'm, I'm not going to participate in this proceeding without the elected county prosecutor. I think this is a sham that you're going forward. When you, the court was... You're going to sit here. You're going to sit here. I, you were told about her unavailability and specifically told her on the phone not to cancel that appointment, that it wouldn't be a problem. Well, I'll tell you what, if you want to be here for the decision, that's your business. Well, Your Honor, I think this is outrageous you're going forward without the prosecutor. I have prepared my remarks and my decision here today, um, and I am... Uh, I guess uh, I am uh, glad I had the opportunity to spend the night to do some deliberation on this matter and think about it. This Kevin is a complete meltdown after he realizes no attorney wants to represent him. Woods was arguing that detectives are framing him for the May 2016 murders of Larry Ordway and Maurice Gordon. He's also accused of shooting and killing 40-year-old Christopher Jones around the same time. Two Louisville homicide detectives, Mr. Tonelli and Mr. Griffin, both fabricated testimony and evidence they committed perjury. He's facing the death penalty and, for the third time, wants a new attorney. Well, He's not says, trying to give me a fair chance, effective counsel. Well, who, who, do, you, who do you think oh, I should give okay. you as a lawyer? I'll write the Bar Association and the ACLU. Ordway and Gore. This criminal lashes out at the judge, and of course, the judge wasn't having any of it. Mr. Brooks, stop. I'm not gonna. This is. You are not I'm being respectful to this proceeding or to with this respect, jury. No, it's not. With all due respect, respect all stating due respect, that doesn't make it respectful. This paperwork by you, Mr. Brooks. Monica Pass. Stop talking till the jury court. is out. Okay, Thank you. So why couldn't we address this before they came out? I'm that not going to time, address it. That bottom was the line. Time to address it though. We're supposed to do all the all the addressings before the jury comes out before we start. The matter. Please I was be seated. To simply address paperwork that was given to me by you, Your Honor. That states Mr. That Brooks. 
It states that you have interrupted me matter. repeatedly. You are on the verge of being removed to that courtroom. I don't want to do on that. What, I want you to stay here. But you law, keep Honor. interrupting me and bringing up irrelevant matters. I told you yesterday as a courtesy that was provided to you so that you would frankly not complain that you didn't get it as quickly as possible. Okay, I am not the custodian of the records. If you have an issue with what was provided to you, how it was provided to you, then take it up with the clerk of she court. But from me. now on, I am not going to be the messenger and give you documents that you request to the custodian of the records or from the custodian of the records. They will simply have to be delivered to you at the jail. But that is in response to your discussion or whatever we want to call it this morning. I'm not taking it up. All right, it is irrelevant. It, it needed to be noted for the record. It doesn't need it to was, be noted, sir. You I need to see. I'll make the appropriate record. Stop interrupting me. The jury's coming out. We're continuing with this trial despite your repeated efforts to disrupt. That's Yesterday, a sit a down. Record. Yesterday alone, sir, 17 interruptions, not including the opportunity that I gave you where you spent 50 minutes, okay, discussing what were primarily either irrelevant or baseless accusations and requests not based in law or fact. I was abundantly patient with you yesterday. And you still have to and, verify by proof any of what and I said. And none of that is required, sir. Because and it is. You can't verify Your belief proof. that Where's that's the, the law the doesn't make it so, Mr. Well, it looks like the rules are reversed, and now the judge is being a Karen. And the court left the door open. This. For me, not for you. My understanding of you your... should have come and asked. Why would you think that that made it okay for you without any advance notice to bring this matter before the jury? You are already, you were, I, I was a, astonished when you began your examination by commenting on the defendant's post arrest silence. That's basic law. It's been basic law in this country for 40 years, 50 years. I have no idea why you would do something like that. And it gives, um, uh, well, I'll, I'll leave it at that. So I don't know what you're up to. The defendant was using this exact same weapon. He was using it in a manner to try and protect property. No, he wasn't. There's, Your Honor, I, with all due respect. I'm not going to rehash the motion. That's absolutely untrue. It and is there's, no, no, no. Your arguments of right. This judge calls out the attorneys for being lousy at their jobs. We're moving on. When these people are upset about specific things that have gone on from that table, like shooting the middle finger up at this court and laughing and joking, Ms. McNeil, be quiet. When these people have sat in this courtroom and watched this behavior from that table and they want to say that they're not happy about it, what is the problem? Judge, I have no problem because I have thick skin. But once you bring in my children, I think that's highly improper. And it's I didn't even sport. know you have children. I don't know what you're talking about. Your children? What about your children? For them to comment on my children is highly improper. And for this court to allow that kind of testimony okay. is also improper. There was, I don't remember any comments about any children. And if there was, it, it, it obviously didn't, it, it, it came and went without me noticing it. Judge, I can assure you that if, if they were talking about your children, you would definitely notice. You need to sit down right now. You're out of line. In fact, you're excused. You need to go sit in the back with your with your uh, chief public defender. He's the public defender. Mr. Weeks, please ask the lawyer from your office to go sit down and not say anything else. To try to threaten my children and bring up my children is inappropriate. Go to the back of the room now. That just violated about every rule of professional responsibility that I have ever, I have never. If you're gonna get up here and you're going to- Judge, I asked you to go sidebar on this matter. You, sidebar or not, you don't have one of your assistant public defenders say something about my children? Judge, that same venom that the court is expressing is the same venom that defense counsel had to sit through this entire morning when she their brought children up her children multiple referenced. times during the trial. Nobody knows if I'm barren or not. They judge, don't know about my children. Judge. Sit down. Uh oh, looks like this next attorney got in trouble with the judge. What one does isn't what we're 
your but theory that's show, but your theory show what he did. Right, but that's a different of, no, no, attorney Pattis, attorney line. Pattis, attorney Pattis. How many times do I have to say when I'm speaking, you stop? You have been a member of the bar for a long, long time, and you know the rules. And even during a sidebar, when the mics were turned on, listen to this back and forth. Attorney Pattis, I'm not going to have the comments anymore. I'm not going to have it. I'm not going to have it. Do I'm you not expect have me to lay silently when they're directed at me, but inappropriately? Do you expect me to roll over for my client? It's not going to happen. Turns out making memes know. of the judge really didn't work for this uh, next Kevin in court. And ever since this trial started and you've been you've been calling it a, a kangaroo court yourself, right? Yes. Right. And you've called this judge a tyrant, correct? Yes. OK. And you actually use that word a lot with your audience. You call people tyrants, don't you? Only when they act like it. Okay. Um, and one way that you've been conveying to your audience that Judge Bellis has been acting like a tyrant is by showing her with lasers coming out of her eyes, right? You know you did that? I didn't direct that. First time I saw it was in court. Oh, so you've been watching this? Yeah, I've been watching. Okay. You, you could have just watched from the state. Infection or preventative. Sustained. But you've been broadcasting your show during this trial, haven't you? I have changed some of my show. Let's pull a 477. Is this Is full? This should be in already. It is a full exhibit. And what was it, Ron? 477? 477, Your Honor. This is the tyrant you've been telling your audience about, right? Yeah. I I'm barred from saying why I said it. So I, I didn't ask you why. Oh, this is the tyrant you've been telling your audience about, right? I believe the I believe Sir so, Mr. Jones. Yes. Look at me. Yes. yes. No, or I don't know. I don't know. The answer is you don't know. About that. I didn't make no, that. No. This is the tyrant pictured here that you've been telling your audience <clears throat> about, right? I thought you were asking me that again about the about the image or about me believing this is tyrannical. What's no, no, no. can you restate the question, please? Sure. I'll say, I'll restate it for the third time for you. Objections and comments move to strike. Th this is, and we have one motion. Okay, thank you. This picture right here, that's Judge Bellis, correct? Yes. Lasers coming out of her eyes, correct? Yes. That's who you've been referring to as a tyrant to your audience, correct? Yes. Okay, and you refer to tyrants um, to your audience a lot, right? Some. Right. Tyrants are people who are um, going to oppress others and strip them of their freedoms, correct? That's a common definition. Right. And you've not just called Judge Bellos a tyrant, but you said that this whole thing, what's happening here, is part of a plot, isn't it? Action motion and limiting? No, not the whole thing. I think the jury's real. Can I have that question again? Yeah, I think what I asked you. I understand. I understand. Thank you. What you've been telling the audience is that this whole thing is part of a plot, I believe is what I asked. Objection, motion, and limiting. Politics. That's a yes or no. It's a yes, no, or I don't know, sir. I so thought there was, I thought there was, well, Tron, may we approach briefly? Yes, sir. Okay. If this goes on, he'll read this, that, and everything else. And I thought that I thought that politics, you know, was out of it. He thinks this is a plot orchestrated by. Excuse me. He thinks this trial reflects the effort of tyrants to silence him, including George Soros, Hillary Clinton, and others. And by asking this question, the door is being opened. I said that's part of the plot. Yeah, that's that opens the door. And it hasn't just been. Could we pull that back up? I didn't hear the question. Yet. I haven't asked one yet. It hasn't just been this way that you've been depicting. The tyrant. Let me show you Exhibit 477. 
Just, is this 477? I'm not. Yes. You also have displayed Judge Bellis engulfed in flames, haven't you, to your audience? No. One of my crew made that. They make thousands of images. Thousands of images. Just sir. one second. Is this a Pulitzer? No, it's not, Your Honor. Pull it down. Pull it down. Pull it down. I'd offer it. No Peaches. objection, Judge. I forgot the number. 461. 469. One. Thank you. Do we have a bench copy? Uh, not at the moment, Your Honor. And that's Judge Bellis on the right there, isn't it? Yes. Engulfed in flames. Mm -hmm. And. And that's it. I didn't ask you the other person. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. That's another judge, right? Objection, motion, and limiting. That's not what I was going to say. Objection, motion, and limiting. That's another producer's no report. So, that's. Mr. Jones, because your attorney stood up and objected. So remember when there's an I'll draw it. I'll draw it. Okay. But just, you see, yeah, another person just, made this report. Second. Just remember that when there's an objection, just. Yeah. That, that's that's what you're Thank you. Yes, thank you. Another, uh, one of your employees made that, right? Greg I, Reese? Yes, it's it's another producer, it's an independent producer. His report that was made that we uh, later featured on the site. I first learned about it in the last court case. But yes, I think it's showing that Lady Liberty is being burned up by due process being erased. Uh, and Mr. Jones, Greg Reese, are you saying he's not an employee of yours? Uh, he, he's a, I believe he's a contractor now. Okay, you pay him, yes? Yes. Okay, you pay him to create these video segments, right? This Kevin attorney gets schooled on basic manners as if he's a toddler. Is that he was specifically referring to Anderson. Right, he said in his deposition that he wasn't talking about Miss De La Rosa because he doesn't want this jury thinking, oh, I was calling her an actress. Objection. I was only talking about Anderson Cooper, right? Argumentative, attributing thoughts I'm to his mind. I'm not containing any objections, attorney. Unless you're standing Obje up anymore. I beg your pardon, Judge? I said, I'm not going to entertain your objections unless you're on your feet. I'm on my feet. Objection. I'm putting no. thoughts okay. into Mr. Jones' Sidebar, mind. Sidebar, please. I say it for the record so we have a good record. I will not, I, I let the last three or four go, but I will not entertain objections unless you stand up. And for me, I'm not asking for anything that's out of the norm. No, you're not. I've now lost the question and the objection. So I can play it back? Or no, I, I, can, I think I can get it across. You just offered, Ms. Paz, that Alex Jones offered for the first time in depositions in advance of this trial that when he was referring to this being a faked interview, he was only... Karen decides that she needs more attention. Kevin decided to scream at the top of his lungs, disrupting the court and making a fool out of himself. Hey, y'all. Hey, 
meltdown during this hearing. Iron Sandre Byers, date of birth 4-10-2003. Okay, thank you, sir. Um, in this matter, uh, the court does find probable cause for four counts of murder in the first degree, class one felonies, and one count of attempted murder in the first degree, a class two felony. I am appointing an attorney to represent you. Um, I would like to turn to the state for any recommendation regarding release conditions. <sighs> Thank you, Your Honor. The state is requesting a $5 million cash bond. Um, I'm going to go through the factors articulated in the statute. The nature and circumstances of the case are serious. The defendant committed four murders and one attempted murder in two different jurisdictions in Phoenix and then in Mesa within the span of about 12 hours. After killing one victim in Phoenix, he took the bus to Mesa where he was staying at his grandmother's house and then killed three other victims there and attempted to kill another separate victim. The defendant clearly poses a danger to others in the community, given the senseless murders in this case, over which he has indicated to police he has no remorse. The weight of the evidence against the defendant is strong. He was identified on surveillance video from the Phoenix location and from the light rail and other video in Mesa, all wearing the same clothing. And the preliminary ballistics match the same gun, as firing at least one casing left at each scene, with the exception of one Mesa location where no casing was found in the park, which was under irrigation at the time. Right. The defendant later need to be quiet. The defendant later is committing each of these murders and identified himself in surveillance stills. The defendant normally lives in Scottsdale with family. He was staying at his grandmother's house in Mesa with family, and he does appear to have ties to the Phoenix metro area. He has no prior felony convictions for the court's information. The court should also consider the views of this, the victims in this case. One of the next of kin provided the court with a victim impact statement and does not want the defendant to be released given the harm that he's caused. Um, if the defendant is able to postpone his conditions of release, include electronic monitoring with house arrest, no direct or indirect contact with any victim next of kin or witness, and he may not possess a firearm or any weapons. He should not return to the scene of any of the offenses, and he should not consume alcohol or ingest or use illegal substances. Thank you, Your Honor. Great, thank you. Um, the court does want to note that it did receive a written um, next of kin uh, victim representative impact statement. The court also considered that as well. <clears throat> um, at this time, the court makes the following findings. The proof evident, the proof is evident or the presumption is great that the defendant committed the above felony offenses. There is clear and convincing evidence that the defendant poses a substantial danger to the community. And at this time, no combination of release will reasonably assure the safety of the community. Um, and that's pursuant to Rule 7.2b2. To reach its finding, the court considered all of the factors required in 7.2b3 a through g. Unless the state moves to expedite the hearing, the court will set a bond eligibility hearing for no later than seven days from today's hearing. Um, the court will set a status conference for June 2nd at 8.30. There is um, 
an evidentiary or bond hearing set for June 5th at 1.30 in the afternoon, and then a preliminary hearing has been set for June 6th. Um, so, Mr. Byers, I am holding you in custody without a bond at this time. Um, your lawyer will talk to you. Um, you will have a bond hearing, or your lawyer will be there, the state will be there, and then the court will decide if you're eligible for a bond at that time. Um, so they'll have an opportunity to re-review your release conditions. Uh, I am ordering um, that you not initiate uh, any alleged um, victim or next of kin. Uh, um, is there anything else from the state? No, Your Honor, thank you. All right, thank you. We'll stand in recess as to this matter. Yeah, let's get out of here. Uh, Looks like someone pissed off the judge a little too much. Any time it got Delmore wants. Isn't that the real issue that we're here today in crystallized form? You've been spending enough time going up with that. And if there's one thing you haven't figured out, Ms. Smith, I'm going to teach you something today. Just because big, expensive law firms tell you, hey, City of Jackson, it's okay. You can go up and appeal. We can make hundreds of thousands of dollars, and you can lose. Have, have, you, have you figured that out now? Because the $500,000 you lost would have easily paid the $350,000 that some of those businesses, nonprofits, and churches are currently owed. Yeah. What, what's, the only thing that's allegedly not proper with my rulings is the fact that several haven't went your way, you haven't liked it, I got affirmed in the Court of Appeals. The only thing that's really at issue now is whether you can take, spend more money, more time, and more delay in paying these people back. Well, we're that, that's, to... that's the issue. Your Honor. Is, is there any authority that you can cite to the court that when the city, a municipality like the city of Jackson levies an illegal tax against its citizen, it gets to reap the benefit of its own illegal conduct. Is there a single case as a city attorney that you can cite for that proposition? Not at this moment, Your Honor. I, you know what? You can't cite it in any proposition because I've already researched it. So I want a commitment from the city today. Is it going to pay the rest of that money back too? I don't have the authority to, to state that to Your Honor. The city is going to pay it back, but we're asking to pay it back on a schedule that doesn't no, impact again, other services. We're, we're, I, I know how you're trying to wiggle around my question here. Honor, uh, I came today prepared to argue a stay motion. If we're arguing, to trust me, I, I, I can rule on that in two seconds. I'm going to deny that, but I'm, I'm going to flesh out the rest of the record. So among the other things that the Court of Appeals can do is see what a lousy, shoddy, legal job the city did in researching this issue. And it's already cost the city a half a million bucks. And now you don't want to pay back the rest of these, these people that are owed their money. And you want to go up and spend more money appealing my decision that gave you 45 days to pay it back. And after Mr. Birch admitted that they had the ability to pay it. And you know, if you think I'm being a little harsh on you today, it's time somebody got a little harsh on the city in this. Because you know what? You, it, it's been the worst public debacle I've ever seen. You just ended up with the city suing the county. You got the city trying to take three some million dollars when it was an illegal tax. And now all you want to do is keep the litigation going. You know, so who the real losers look like are the lawyers that are handled. Karen gets called out by the judge for being a little too conniving. Okay. This child yourself, he doesn't know dates. He doesn't know anything. And you do this. This is outrageous. This is outrageous. You are a mean, vindictive <laughs> woman who could do this. She's moving into a new place. You didn't get what you want when you call Child Protective Services. They conduct no less than three investigations against her. They find absolutely no basis to remove the children, so you decide to make a little trouble, make her life a little bit miserable. And you go around before she moves into the community and you plaster things up around the community. She says you gave it out to people. Genius over here says it was supposed to be on telephone poles. <laughs> All right? I want to tell you something. If I were the family court judge, not a mediator, but if I were the family court judge who was deciding visitation with your children, you, sir, would see your children under a supervised visitation 
arrangement only. And I am a very serious proponent of fathers having as unrestricted quality time if they are not the custodial parents of children as is possible because I always believe that that's in a child's best interest to have the love and companionship of both biological parents. It's always been my view. I'm a serious proponent of that, but not, sir, when you live with this kind of witch. Judgment in this case is for the plaintiff in the amount of $2,000. Whatever counterclaim there is is dismissed. That's all. Parties are excused. You may step out. <laughs> well, it looks like someone didn't take his verdict too well. Here's your sentence. I'm sentencing you to 30 months felony probation, and the probation is going to be to this court. You're going to be allowed to travel wherever you want. You do not have to live in the state of Illinois. You can report by phone. I know that uh, if you're going to try to make a living and do some of the things you do, you may have to go to uh, other uh, the places, New York and Los Angeles. You can do those things. You will pay restitution to the city of Chicago in the amount of $120,106. You are fined $25,000, which is the maximum fine, and you will spend the first 150 days of your sentence in the Cook County Jail. And that will start today, right here, right now. Mr. Smollett, though the jury found you guilty and I've sentenced you as I have, you have the right to appeal the findings and rulings of the court or ask your sentence be modified. To do those things, you need to file a notice of appeal in writing within 30 days. You may also file a motion to modify your sentence, which would have to be filed in writing within 30 days. Anything not stated in those filings are waived for purposes of appeal. You cannot afford lawyers or transcripts. They would be provided free of charge. Do you have any questions? No, I would just like to say to Your Honor that I am, uh, I am not suicidal. That's what I would like to say. Okay. I am not suicidal. Okay. I am not suicidal. I am innocent, and I am not suicidal. If I did this, then it means that I stuck my fist in the fears of black Americans in this country for over 400 years and the fears of the LGBTQ community. Your Honor, I respect you and I respect the jury, but I did not do this. And I am not suicidal. And if anything happens to me when I go in there, I did not do it to myself. And you must all know that. I respect you, Your Honor. I respect your decision. Jail time. I am not suicidal. Okay.